As for the last demonstration of the application of the uh, equipartition theorem, let's think about uh, solids, so vibrations in a solid. So we have a solid that consists of um, N, capital N, atoms and the solid is at a, an absolute temperature T so, so that you can think of one atom um, in thermal contact with the rest of the atoms as the heat reservoir uh, for example we can think of a copper or a gold crystal etc so these atoms are arranged in um, some periodic pattern for example I have here a simple cubic model you can see that the atoms are bonded and uh, at their equilibrium positions form a lattice sites uh, in this case a simple cubic uh, structure and you can see that these bonds between the atoms I can think of as uh, springs and let me call the spring constant alpha for each of these uh, springs so basically these atoms will perform simple harmonic motion about their equilibrium lattice sites so we have simple harmonic motion SHM about equilibrium lattice sites and for uh, each of these springs we can basically think about the energy of the system so for a spring that is uh, lying along the x-axis we can have the kinetic energy component px squared over 2m plus 1 over 2 alpha x squared uh, as in the harmonic oscillator where alpha is the spring constant omega is square root alpha over m it's the uh, angular frequency and uh, this comes from the simple harmonic motion equation of motion x double dot equals minus alpha over m x which is minus omega square x and this x double dot is basically the acceleration so basically we're writing here net force equals mass times acceleration and if you think about uh, contributions from x y and z for the energy per atom I can write uh, epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z uh, the mean value of this energy epsilon x bar is because of two quadratic independent two quadratic terms uh, each will contribute 1 over 2 kt to the mean energy so I will have kt per uh, dimension uh, and the same is true for epsilon y I have mean energy kt the same is true for mean energy epsilon z is kt so for the three dimensions I have I can say that epsilon bar will be equal to 3 kt and this is per atom per simple uh, per, the, per atom that is vibrating around uh, about its equilibrium point then for the capital N atoms the total mean energy will be equal to 3N kT and for one mole for one mole we have the number of atoms is Avogadro's number so that the total mean energy will be equal to 3RT R is Avogadro's number times Boltzmann constant then we can calculate its molar specific heat 
at constant volume, it is del E bar del T at constant volume. This is equal to 3 R. And since R is about 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, that means the CV value will be around 25 joules per mole Kelvin. Um, so this is going to be a constant at a temperature high enough to consider this solid as a classical. So I have to note here that temperature high enough to be classical. Remember that the thermal energy should be much greater than the spacing uh, between quantum levels uh, in energy. So this value of CV is independent of the mass of the atoms or the strength of the bond, uh, the spring constant alpha, etc. It's uh, basically a constant value. So we can summarize this result at sufficiently high temperatures all solids have the same temperature independent molar specific heat CV equal to 3R. So this is the statement of Dulong Petit Law. All solids have the same temperature independent molar specific heat 3R at sufficiently high temperatures. Um, now, we talk about CP and CV in gases, so there is one uh, remark here I would like to make about solids. Uh, so first of all, I would like to note that for solids, the value of CP and CV, molar specific heat at constant pressure and at constant volume, are almost the same. And why is that? Uh, since the coefficient of thermal expansion, alpha, is of the order of 10 to minus 4 to 10 to minus 6 per degree Celsius um, typically for solids. So we find that the change in the dimensions of the solid is negligibly small if you perform it at constant uh, pressure so that to a good approximation uh, the, the process at constant pressure is a process at constant volume because the change in the dimensions is very small. Uh, and number two, when we said uh, this has to be uh, true for a, a temperature that's high enough for the solid to be uh, approximated uh, classically, uh, we find that for most solids, the room temperature is high enough. So for most solids, room temperature about 300 Kelvin 
uh, is high enough for the classical approximation. All right, so let's summarize what we said. We considered a solid which, which has capital N atoms at an absolute temperature T, and where T is high enough to be classical, uh, for the solid to be considered classically. And for example, this is a copper or gold crystal, etc. And we have atoms arranged in a periodic pattern uh, inside a crystal. Here I have a simple cubic structure for demonstration. Uh, you can think of the bonds between atoms to be springs and atoms will vibrate about their equilibrium positions performing simple harmonic motion uh, and the energy per spring will be given by a kinetic term 1, ha one over 2 uh, mv squared or p squared over 2m plus 1 over 2 alpha delta r squared uh, where delta r is the displacement from equilibrium position of the spring so for uh, x y and z dimensions we have uh, three types of springs and they each contribute an energy of kt to the mean total mean energy per atom so you can say that for epsilon x bar we have one half kt from px squared over 2m term and one half kt from 1 over 2 alpha x squared term because I have energy terms that are only dependent on momentum or position and quadratically. So uh, for the three dimensions we have 3 kt per atom, for capital N atoms 3 n kt and for one mole 3 rt where r is the universal gas constant which is 8.3 joules per mole kelvin. So the molar specific heat at constant volume, uh, the derivative of mean energy with respect to temperature is 3R, independent of temperature, independent of mass, independent of alpha, etc. So this is true for all solids at sufficiently high temperatures, they will have the same CV value equal to 3R, known as the dulong petit law. And since when you consider a process occurring at constant pressure, a temperature increase does not cause a significant change in the dimensions of the solid because the temperature uh, thermal coefficient is rather small for solids. Cp and Cv values are almost the same. A constant pressure process is approximately a constant volume process as well. And for most solids, this uh, classical approximation will hold at room temperature. So room temperature is already high enough for the classical approximation to be valid.